Hey, what's up everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to the conversation. So today I'm going to be talking about my man Giannis Antetokounmpo. Question is, if Giannis Antetokounmpo doesn't make it to the NBA Finals this season, should he consider leaving the Milwaukee Bucks and going to another team? I'm a huge Giannis Antetokounmpo fan. I love the way that he plays basketball. He's probably the most intense basketball player in the world. Right up there with Russell Westbrook, he's extremely competitive. I like his focus towards, you know, the game. Obviously, he's a freak athlete that can pull off insane dunks, but he's also a great, great, great teammate. I've never heard any negative things said about him by his teammates or anyone else. This season, he's putting up video game numbers, but if you look at Giannis's career overall, you'll see that he's someone that is committed to getting better and committed to excellence. For example, obviously, we all know he just came off of you know his first ever regular season MVP, but if we look at you know, his career up until this point, his rookie season, Giannis only averaged 6.8 points. The next season, he averaged, 20, uh, you know, 12.7. Next season after that, he averaged 17. Then after that, he averaged 23. Then he went to 27. Then he went to about roughly 28. Now he's averaging 30. Giannis Antetokounmpo is someone that is dedicated to becoming one of the greatest players of all time. And you can see that he's put in the work. If you look at his body, when Giannis first came into the NBA, he was very, very skinny. Now, at six foot 11, this dude now weighs about 242 pounds. When he first came into the league, he was scrawny. I mean, he looked like a straw, like, you know, like a spaghetti or something. But to see how far that he's come in the NBA with the same organization, with pretty much no drama, we don't hear much about Giannis. We don't hear much about him complaining. He just seems really committed to that organization now. If we look at his production this season, he's playing basically 30 minutes a game, which is about three minutes less than he played the season before. He's averaging 30 points. He's shooting 55% from the, from the floor. He's shooting 31% from the three-point line. Now, I know a lot of you guys seeing that stat may say, but hey, wait a minute. He's only shooting 31% from the three-point line. What's, there's not, that's nothing to write home about. The thing is, though, is that Giannis has made this commitment to become a better three-point shooter. And the reason you can see this is last season, he shot 25.6% from the three-point line, but he only attempted 2.8 and made about 0.7 three-pointers a game. Whereas this season, he's making 1.5 three-pointers a game and attempting 4.8. So obviously, you can see his confidence in his shot has gone up. I, I mean, he's not a 40% three-point shooter, but how many people are out there that can shoot 40% from the three-point line consistently, unless you're Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, or someone like this. I mean, it's gonna be really hard to find some of Paul George. It's gonna be really hard to find someone that can consistently hit the three-point shot at a, reg at a really, really high clip. But he's still, you know, improving that. Then his free throw percentage is a 6.61%. That can be a little bit better because they actually dipped from the season before from 72.9%, but he's getting you 13.6 rebounds, 5.8 assists, one steal, and one block a game, and currently has the highest PER, which is a stat I don't really pay much attention to, but I'm sure some of you guys out there do pay attention to PER. Now, if we look at his team, currently the Milwaukee Bucks are the number one team in the Eastern Conference and have the best record in all of the entire NBA. They're currently, as I'm doing this video, they have a 48 and eight record, which is, which is incredible. And the reason why that's incredible, I think has a lot to do to the testament of Giannis Antetokounmpo, but also to the culture and the type of team that, they, that they've that they assembled around him. If you look at the team overall, they're number one in the league in scoring with 119 points a game. They're also number one in the league in rebounding with 51.9 rebounds a game. Giannis Antetokounmpo is the major reason for all of that success. If you take him off of the Milwaukee Bucks, they may be a good playoff team, but I don't think they're going to be who they are. And I mean, these guys can conceivably, conceivably win 70 games a season or 68 games a season if they kept if they keep playing at a very high level which would mean that going into the playoffs the Bucks are going to have home court throughout the entire playoffs now what's been the knock on Giannis the knock has been in the playoffs he's exposed because he doesn't have a great perimeter game last season in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Toronto Raptors granted the Milwaukee Bucks took the first two games in that series and a lot of analysts out there like Stephen A. Smith and others a lot of them said that the series was over. Now, Toronto ended up coming back four games to beat Giannis, and then they put Kawhi on 
Giannis and he was able to bother him a bit. I mean, bother him more than any other basketball player in the world can, at least let me say that. But nevertheless, he didn't have the success by going to the NBA Finals. Now this year, I think he's made a pledge to himself and before the you know, untimely passing of Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant challenged him now to get to the NBA Finals or at least win a championship. So I think that that's the focus, that's the goal that Giannis seems to be aiming for this particular season. Now, for me, I think the thing that will cause Giannis to leave the Bucks is if they don't get to the finals at least, I think that's enough reason for Giannis to consider looking at other teams and I'll tell you why. Currently, as we're doing this video, the Milwaukee Bucks are the number one team in the Eastern Conference. Now, we also have to look at their competitors. In the Eastern Conference, you have the Toronto Raptors at the number two spot with a 42 and 15 record. They're really, really great, but they don't have a definitive superstar like the Milwaukee Bucks do. Then you have the bus, the Boston Celtics with young, you know, young, talented stars like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and others. And they're the three seed with 39 and 17. Then, of course, you have the gritty Miami Heat led by Jimmy Butler. And you got to appreciate what they have going on there. And then you have the Philadelphia 76ers who are pretty much going to end up being a wild card in the Eastern Conference playoffs because they've been quite inconsistent, uh, you know, throughout this regular season. If we look at their last 10 games, they're five and five. So these are the teams that Giannis is going to have to go up against this coming playoffs to get to the championship round. Now, if I had to look at the field, what teams could possibly beat the Milwaukee Bucks? Well, I think that, you know, the Celtics have a shot because of the versatility that they have on their team with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and Kemba Walker, and then also the coaching of Brad Stevens. I think they have a shot. Obviously, you're not gonna rule out the Toronto Raptors because they are the defending champs and maybe the Miami Heat, but I still think that if the Milwaukee Bucks were to play against the Miami Heat, I think Giannis is just gonna be too much for them because the Milwaukee Bucks have too much length, too much size. Giannis is too ferocious, they have no one on their roster that can even begin to hope to dream to think about guard, guarding Giannis. If you look at the Philadelphia 76ers, the Bucks just played against them and they just smashed them. And Giannis let, you know, Joel Embiid know like, hey bro, pump the brakes with all of this. I'm the best player in the world. You don't get to have one good game and then come out and say you're the best player in the world when you got me out here doing beast mode on these dudes every single night. So I think that Giannis doesn't see anyone, you know, um, in the field that can really compete with him. But I think that if he's able to at least break through that glass ceiling and get to the NBA Finals, I think at the end of the season, he'll be able to look back on everything that transpired throughout the regular season and say, okay, what happened? I won another league MVP. So if anything, I maintained my level of play or got a little bit better and the numbers dictate that he got better as, a, as an individual performer. So you have that to hang his hat on. And number two, he'll say, well, at least I got to the NBA Finals, which is a step further than I did the year before. Now, if he gets to the Finals, it's just a matter of him now putting himself in the right mental space and say, hey, you know what? Maybe if we had done this a particular way, we did that a particular way, maybe if we had a piece or two, maybe we'll be able to get over the top because that's happened to teams before. In the 2008 Finals, the Lakers went on to lose to the Boston Celtics but they didn't blow up their team. The next season, they re-upped, went for it again, and then they beat the Orlando Magic. Granted, it was a different opponent, but in 2010, they still beat the Celtics. So it doesn't mean that if they get to the finals, then it's a loss and they need to change teams. It may just needs, it may, it may just mean they need to have another crack at it, go, have another go at it, and maybe the results may be different. So I think for him to leave the Milwaukee Bucks or really consider leaving would be if they didn't make the finals. But if, I, if they do make the finals and they're competitive, at least they're respectable, then for sure he stays. And if they win, I don't see any argument out there for him leaving the Milwaukee Bucks, but these are my opinions. So what I wanna know from you guys is quite simple. Do you think that if Giannis doesn't get to the NBA finals, he should leave the Milwaukee Bucks? Or do you think that if he does, he should consider staying and continue to you know give it another shot and see how See if he can break through that glass ceiling and ultimately win a championship for the Milwaukee Bucks. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and hit the notification button to be notified when all of our newest and hottest content comes out. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day. Peace.